You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Address? Yep. 2719 Ye Old Curiosity Shop. This is it. Oh, officers. I'm so glad you're here. You the one who called, ma'am? That would be my husband. Jensen? The detectives are here. How do you do? Mr. Brown, what seems to be the problem? Appalling. Absolutely appalling. They broke in through the storeroom. That was the first thing we saw this morning. The back door off its hinges. My husband almost had a heart attack. All right, take it easy. Was anything missing? A number of items, I should say. The sense of violation. Our entire stock will have to be re-inventoried. For the insurance, you know. Quite a number of items, a large number. Well, then I guess we'll have to take some pictures. Dust for prints. I consider it a personal invasion. The complete and utter disregard for boundaries for one's private space. You folks have a list of what was taken. Oh, we wouldn't know where to begin. So many things. A uh, Queen Anne chest. What was in it? I don't know. We could never get it open. I was going to have a key made. Hard to say what could have been in it. Almost anything. Jewels, family heirlooms. We bought it as is at an estate sale. What else? Uh, a Louis the Fourteenth washstand. Our pride and joy. Two antique children's chairs. Five vases. Six Ming Dynasty. Two hand-carved teakwood cigarette cases with platforms. Approximate value? One hundred dollars. He means two hundred. A tray of rings, three sapphires, three rubies, three emeralds. All genuine? Well, the rubies are actually... All genuine. And there was a 19th century silver service for eight, I mean, twelve. Isn't that right, Jensen? And a dining room chair made in 1778. Let me see. Three paintings in frames. Early Picassos? Huh, that right. What about the stuff that was in the window? Oh, nothing of real consequence. Don't forget the other tray of rings, dear. Remember? The Native American baskets and... and the camera. One camera? A very special camera. One of a kind. Make? Well, it didn't have a name on it. At least we never could make it out. Foreign lettering. Indecipherable. Probably ancient. Never saw one like it before. It was here when we bought the shop. It was imported. Very rare. Very, very rare. At least a hundred years old. Okay, let's see what we got here now. Um, let's see, see, okay. Uh, six vases, uh, five ceramics, a Native American basket, jewelry. A tray of rings. All paste. Six vases of the Ming Dynasty. I don't know what dynasty they're from, but it ain't Ming's. They're from a rummage sale and they're worth a couple of shucks apiece. Chester, will you pipe down and let me read the article? Lawson Plain, no good larceny is what it is. That's nothing but a list for their insurance company. Why those crooks? Police theorize that the thieves broke in sometime during the night. Mr. and Mrs. Jensen T. Brown, the proprietors of the antique shop, listed the following additional items as among the goods stolen. A Louis XIV candelabra. A phony candlestick holder. For Liberace. Two antique children's chairs. Two thrift shop chairs for midgets. And a set of U.S. Navy surplus tableware. Plus a chess worth maybe $25 tops. Hey, listen to this. The paper says there's three oil paintings by Picasso. Yeah, three posters in dime store frames. The guy who painted them thinks a Picasso is a foreign sports car. Two teakwood hand-carved cigarette cases. All right, knock it off, knock it off. Here's something they forgot to put in the paper. A camera? Big deal. Well, it looks like an antique. When I was a kid, you could have bought this in a five and dime. But now, I get it as part of a heist. Perfect. The whole hall is worth maybe 50 bucks. A fence will give us 10, if we're lucky. I could have shot pool for half an hour and made more. Aw, oh, come on, Chester. You want to take my picture? You think that thing works? Well, let's give it a try. Even if there's film in it, it'd be so old by now that it... What do you got to lose? Huh, Chester? Please. Please. 
Scene of the crime, a hotel suite that in this instance serves as a den of thieves. The aftermath of a rather minor event to be noted on a police blotter. An insurance claim. Perhaps a three-inch box on page 12 of the evening paper. There's just one small item to be added to the list of loot. A camera. A most unimposing addition to the flotsam and jetsam that came with it. Hardly worth mentioning, really, because cameras are cameras. Some expensive, some available at the corner drugstore. But this camera, this one is unusual. Because in just a moment, we'll watch as it injects itself into the destinies of three people. For it happens to be a fact that the pictures it takes can only be developed in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, A Most Unusual Camera, starring Mike Starr with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Please, Chester, take my picture. Look at this crummy thing. Far and right and all over it. No place to open it up. Where do you put the film in? Maybe it's already got film in it. Yeah, sure. From the Ming Dynasty. And you think it's still good? Come on! See? You look through the thing on the top here. Now, this must be the button here. Wait, let me pose nice. Hold it, baby. Say cheese. Ta-da! Perfect. Fits right in. Everything else for nothing, so we get a camera that's for nothing. You and your curio shops. My curio shops? You cased the place. You fingered it. You did all the planning. Oh, listen to Miss Culture over there, the patron of the arts. Never mind hock shop, she says. No, let's go up in life. Let's knock off a curio shop because curio shops have nothing but objects of art worth a fortune. And who touted me? The art lover over there. Two weeks of planning, a whole night on the job, and what do we have, Paula? 400 pounds of junk. Yeah? Room service. Wait a minute. Room service, huh? I didn't order no room service. It's the law. What are we going to do? Quick, dump all this stuff out the window. Hold on, Chester. I called for room service, okay? You did? To celebrate our newfound wealth. What would you order? Oh, breakfast for two with all the trimmings. How are we going to pay for it, Paula? This room is costing me a fortune. Coming! Just leave it outside the door. <sighs> oui, monsieur. Very well. I'm not even hungry. How can I eat at a time like this? Uh, maybe a little coffee is all I need. Look, Chester. What's that sticking up out of the camera? It's the picture. I told you it'll work. Hey, let me see that. Well, how do I look? I don't know. Picture came out fine, just fine, but... Isn't that nice? You take good pictures, Chester. Well, there I am, standing by the window. Did you get a good look at this? And so clear. No flash or anything. And look how clear it is. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me think. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Paula, go over to the mirror. What? Go ahead. Now look in the mirror. You're missing a couple of buttons on your shirt? Go on. Now look. Hmm. We look nice together, don't you think? We ought to get some pictures of the two of us. Will you look? So? What's to see? What you're wearing. You like my nightgown, Chet? I got it special for you. I like the way it sort of clings to my body. What do you think? Right, right. Now, look at the picture. So? There I am, standing by the window, wearing a... A what? A fur coat. Oh. Yeah, a fur coat, which you don't have. Huh. Looks like mink. One of those Ember Autumn Haze models. Real pricey. Could be sable. Nah, mm, I don't think so. It's a mink, all right. Chester, what am I doing wearing a fur coat? I wasn't wearing a fur coat when you took the picture, was I? Of course you weren't. I don't have that kind of money. I don't even own a fur coat. Chester, what is going on? I got it. I got it. Got what? It's a gag. A gag? A gag camera, strictly for laughs. What do you mean? You know, like at Coney Island. Remember? It looks like you're wearing a costume or something. I don't think so. Sure. Inside, they got these ready-made pictures already developed. But the negatives have already got a picture on them, see? The only thing this takes is the face. But we ain't in Coney Island. You know, like a carnival when you pose in front of those crazy cardboard things. You put your head on top of the cutout. Fat lady, sailor, cowboy, driving a car, you name it. And it looks real. That's what this thing is. 
Not bad. That's kind of clever. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Well, you might as well clear up the rest of this junk. If you say so. What are we going to do with it? Who cares? Stuff it down a garbage chute for all I care. Except for these phony Ming flower pots. Chester, what'd you do that for? Now we got to clean it up. No, we don't. Leave it for room service. We're paying enough. There's one thing we didn't open yet. Yeah? That little chest over there in the corner. Did it come with a key? No. You'll have to open it in your own inimitable style. There ain't a lock ever made I can't, Jimmy. Anybody ever tell you you had a lousy disposition? If I have a lousy disposition, it's because I'm married to a nickel and dime heister who can't tell a real diamond from a baseball diamond. Baby doll, this suite is costing an arm and a leg. Delivered and paid for by Mrs. Diedrich's son, Chester, from profits collected during a slew of years when you weren't even in the picture. So happens that I need you like I need a three-time conviction. Well, aren't you the clever one? Let's see what's inside. Chester, look! I'm looking, but I don't believe it. The most beautiful fur coat I've ever saw. Full length, too. Oh, so we scored something after all. We sure did. And don't start giving me any of your cheap pizzazz about taking this to a fence. I wouldn't dream of it. Don't argue with me either. This is for little old Paula. Oh, look at these, like, stripes. Different colors, all mushed together. How do they do that? I think it's called Ember Autumn Haze. Like the one in the picture. Right. Exactly like the one in the picture. Come back to bed. In a minute. It's the middle of the night. Sure is, and I can't sleep. What are you doing by the window? Getting some fresh air. Are you still worried about the camera? Shut up. Yeah, you are. You're playing with it, aren't you? What do you care? Leave the light off. It's hot in here. It's not hot. We got air conditioning. What's it to you? You can't just let it go by, can you? You want me to forget about it? Is that it? So it's a crazy camera. So it takes dopey pictures of things that aren't really there. That's not the point. Oh, yeah? What is the point? Sure, it takes dopey pictures. Pictures like, like things that haven't happened yet, but do happen. That's the point. So what do we do, Chet? One lousy picture and you get insomnia? It's a camera. That's all. Here, I'll show you. Did you just take a picture? There. See any lightning? What did you take a picture of? It doesn't matter. The wall, the door. All right? Now drop it, why don't you? Let it alone. Forget about it. How can I forget about it? This thing comes from... from witches, maybe, or... or sorcerers. Look at the writing on it. It could be loaded with black magic or something. And what are you loaded with? Do you see anything? Where is the man with the horns who comes in with a bargain for your soul? He's supposed to show up any time now, right? But he's not here, is he? Listen to me. It's a screwy camera. Period. Let's see how this one came out. Well? Here. You tell me. It's my brother Woodward. Standing by the door. That's who it is. It's that cheap, no-good brother of yours. But that's crazy. He's in jail. Seven years for breaking and entering, and that was only a year ago. So it's impossible. So was the fur coat, right, Paula? Oh, no. No, Chester. It's throwing us a curve. Maybe it's somebody who looks like Woodward. Chester, I'm scared. Feel my heart. I'm palpitating. A little palpitating never hurt nobody, and what's to be scared about? The thing has obviously gone tilt or something. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Woodward's not here. Woodward can't possibly be here. Woodward won't be here. Woodward is serving time. He's 900 miles away in a cell block, and I don't care what that crazy camera shows us. Who's ever in that picture ain't Woodward. What's that? Shh! Somebody's trying to jimmy the door. Go see. Please, Chester. But be careful. Woodward! Hi, Paula. Hello, Chester. I didn't want to wake anybody, so I just, you know, use the old lockpick on the door. Hope you folks don't mind. Mind? Why would I mind? But, but you're in jail, aren't you? I broke out. Me and another guy. 
Hit in the laundry truck. <laughs> nice, huh? I thought maybe I could stay with you for a few days. If you really don't mind. You don't, do you? I was thinking, maybe if I was around, you two wouldn't fight so much. You still all the time fighting? Hey, what you got in your hand there? A picture. Yeah? Let me see. Well, will you look at that? Yep, there I am, standing right by the door. Wearing just what I'm wearing now, too. Same clothes. Ain't science wonderful? Do you know what you're saying? Sure I do. I think it's great. To be able to get a picture of... of... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah? If I was outside the door... Uh-huh. And you was in here... That's right. But you already have this picture of me. Twice, so do you want standing to... right here. Inside the door. Yeah, and? Then... Like... How come? Sleep well, Woodward? Uh, yeah. <sighs> Thanks for letting me use the couch. Think nothing of it. A growing boy needs his rest. What are we going to do today, Chester? I don't know yet. But I got a feeling it's going to have something to do with that camera. I still don't see how we can use it. Neither do I. As far as I can see, it's strictly for laughs. Well, maybe we could sell it. For some big bucks. You know, there's rich people might want something like that. For what? Well, to... To, uh, I don't know. Find out who's coming to the front door of, of their office. Like a hidden camera. See who's robbing them blind. You know, in advance. Try selling them an item like that. They throw you out on your duff. Or some company. They could take it apart and see how it works and make new ones. No way. You'd never get in the door. They'd say you were off your rocker or burn you at the stake, one or the other. What do you think, Woodward? Oh, good call, Paula. Ask the intellectual in the crowd. We could... we could... sell, like... tickets. Yeah, that's it. Set up a place, like, uh, a stand somewhere, to take pictures. Like at a carny, right? Or maybe, maybe we could, you know, like that. Thank you, Einstein. Now look, I'm gonna lay it on the line. What are we? What do you mean? I asked a question. What are we? What are we, Chet? You mean us? Well, we're... We're people, I guess. Sure, sure. But what kind of people? We're three minor league heisters, grifters, con artists. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, that's it. Well, now we finally got something here that maybe might do good for somebody else. Like who? Science. Science could use something like this. For what? For people, you lughead. We got something here for humanity. Who? Human beings. The world. I'm not so sure we shouldn't just give this to humanity and do something good for the first time in our rotten lives. You got a leak in your attic? What's humanity ever done for us? Sure, Paula, sure. That's what I mean. Just what you said. What'd I say? That's the way we are. Everything for us. Not for anybody else. Yeah. We're family. Little. Petty. Selfish. Mean. That's us! Well, I've risen above all that now. I say let's give this to the world. Here, world. A gift from Chester Diedrich. And his wife. And me too, Chet. Don't forget me. Yeah, 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 and Woodward. So here's a gift for humanity. A gesture's all, maybe. Just a gesture. But it shows the heart of Chester Diedrich and his wife. And his brother-in-law. How do we... <clears throat> Woodward, do me a favor. Pray through your nose. Huh? Why don't you go watch TV? Isn't there something you want to watch uh, to occupy that brain of yours? Oh, yeah. Sure. How do we know the things medical science could do with this? How do we know how valuable this will be as a scientific discovery? They'll name a building after us. Throw big society balls and charity stuff for us. I can see it now. The Chester Diedrich Foundation for the... The, uh, the... 
Terminal is something or other. In the Los Tendros opener, Hotfoot has just won it. Jerry's Flash second, Easter Baby third. This was Hotfoot's second win in three days. He paid twenty-four ninety, fifteen eighty, and six seventy. We now move into the second race. Cut that off. I'm making plans. Oh, sure, Chet. Anything you say. Ah, oh, where was I? Hi, society. I can wear my mink coat. Of course, I'll need a couple of new dresses and some matching shoes. Hold on. Well, maybe just one dress to start with. You know, a real evening gown with. I got it. You sure do, Chester. I never would have thought of that. I got it. Got what? I got it. The TV set. Woodward, you're a genius. Man, this camera takes pictures of things that happen, but haven't happened yet. Uh, I guess. Read my lips. It took a picture of Paula with a fur coat. Five minutes later, she had a fur coat. It took a picture of that door with nobody standing in front of it, and then you were standing in front of it. Follow me? Uh, no. All right, boys and girls. Now get this: we go to the racetrack, right? I'm starting to get it. We take a picture of the winners' board at the track before the race. I think I get it. The winners' board before the race. That's a great idea, but I don't get it. Hold on now. We take a picture of the winners' board, and then we we look at it and oh, Chester. Woodward, are we getting through to you yet? We take a picture of the winners' board. It's empty, see, because the race hasn't been run yet. But that camera, that little old bugger over there, it takes pictures of things that happen five minutes later. So the picture we get will have the winning numbers on the board. We know what horses come in and what they paid. <laughs> Now I get it. Come on, everybody, get your coats. Woody, my boy, grab one of mine and put on a tie so you can be in disguise. Oh, Chester, this is so exciting! That was the first race. We can get there in time for the last four. How much dough has everybody got? Uh, I got a twenty and a ten. That's thirty. I know it's thirty. I got two tens and three twenties. Come on. Okay, and the old insurance, my hundred-dollar bill. That makes one eighty and thirty. You got anything for the pot, Woodward? Yeah, I got ten. Two hundred twenty bucks. Is that enough? There's bound to be at least one long shot. Why we can parlay this into a million if we work on it long enough. We can't lose, Paula. We simply can't lose. Come on, everybody, ready? Chester, what about humanity? Humanity? Like you said, baby. What did humanity ever do for us? Let's get going. Give me the camera. Let me see the camera. You brought it, didn't you? Right here, Chester. I was just teasing. I'll brace it on the rail to keep it steady. Oh boy, Chet. Oh boy, you got us an idea here. My ribs aren't bothering your elbow, are they? No, not at all. Then let loose of me. Let me get the picture. Did you get the board? I got it. Are you sure? I'm sure. Now what do we do? Now we wait for the picture to come out. Don't we have to develop it first? Take it to a drugstore or something? Oh, for crying out loud! No, see, it comes out of this little slot on the top. Yeah, neat. Sometimes it takes a little while. How long? The race is going to start pretty soon. All things come to him who waits. Oh, which horse do you like? I don't know which one I like yet, on account of I haven't looked at the picture yet. Okay? Uh huh. I like the number five horse, Tinky Beggar. It suits you. Peanuts, hot dogs, get your red hots here. Over here. Oh no! Wait five little minutes, and you can buy all the hot dogs you want. Right now, everything we have goes on the horse. Which one? Well. Look at it. Six, three, and eleven. And look what six pays. Forty-seven sixty to win. Hand me the racing form. Here you go. Number six. Number six. Tidy two. That's number six. Okay, kids, we bet our money on Tidy too. I don't like the looks of that horse. He's walking real slow. Will you get it through that thick skull of yours? We can't lose. Stay right here and don't let anything happen to that camera.
What's your bet, sir? Put it all on number six, the works. Number six it is. Here's your ticket. Thanks. Psst. Hey, Jack. Get out of my way. Not number six. That's tidy, too. The last Jackie that horse had was Paul Revere. But I mean the original Paul Revere. Now, if you really want to make some dough, I got some information in my pocket here. The goods on the last two races, and all I need from you is cash. You and me could go partners and really make ourselves a bundle on this. I got a tip for you. Bet anything but number six so you don't lower my odds. See you later, Jack. your eyes on the numbers. Six, three, and eleven, just like the picture said. Are we rich yet? We're getting there, Junior. We're getting there. Now let me set up the camera before the next race. Paula, you two go cash in. Here's the ticket. And don't drop it. Okay, Chester. I sure hope you got enough film for that camera of yours. Why, you know, Woodward, that's a very intelligent comment. Film. I wonder where you go to get film for a camera like this. Oh, but I wouldn't worry about it. Chester will figure it out, I'm sure. Want another glass, Chester? No, no. I'm on the phone. Yeah? Yeah, but when can I get a delivery on something like that? No, 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 no. I don't want the black one. It's got to be yellow with black upholstery. Spoked wheels, continental kit on the back, dual exhaust, power everything, the works. You got that? Now when can I get a delivery? All right, then order it. No, 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 no. I'll pay you in cash. Come over with the papers tomorrow morning. We'll settle it then. How much did you say it was? No, I'm not backing out. I was just thinking. Maybe I ought to get two. Huh? Well, you bring the papers. Fine. So long. It's the room service waiter. Are you done with your snack, Woodward? I ate the steak, but I can't finish all the chicken. I guess that'll hold me till dinner, though. Yes? I came for the dishes, madame. Right over there on the coffee table. Can you bring a couple of more bottles of champagne on the way back? Yes, madame. I can easily do that. Hey, get your hands off the camera. Let him look at it. Bet you've never seen anything like that, Pierre. Me no. Most unusual, sir. Isn't it, though? You don't know how unusual. But what do you do after your ten pictures? Is there any other way to get more film? Well, we've only had it for a little while and... We... What did you say? Yeah, what did you say about ten pictures? The inscription on the outside, it says... These are the proprietaires. That means ten to an owner. I presume that means you may only take ten. It's so odd. The lettering is definitely French, but I've never seen a French camera like that. As a matter of fact... Thanks. Bye. Uh, all right. How many pictures have we taken? There was one of Paula. Then one of Woodward. Six. We bet six races. That means we've taken... Eight. We've taken eight pictures. Chester... There's only two left. <sighs> ten. But how do we know what that means? Some frog waiter tells us it means ten, so right away we think we only got two pictures left? How does he know what it means? I bet you we could take as many pictures as we want. But we don't know. Chester, we can't take any chances. No, we can't. You know what we should do? We should sell it. Who rattled your cage? This don't even belong to you. You're strictly for charity, buddy. Now, what we should do with it is go back to the track and bet two more races with it. Are you both crazy? What you do with it is hang on to it. Save it for a rainy day. Careful. You stop it. You're going to break the camera. It took a picture. 
You dropped it and wasted a picture. I didn't drop it. You did. Oh, palpitations. You and your palpitations. Phony palpitations and a stupid brother. Hey, look. I don't have to take that kind of guff off of you. All right, all right. Have a drink. Give me the camera. What's in the picture? It's me. It was pointing at me when it went off. And it looks like... Like I'm... She's screaming. Let me see that. Get your hands off. Why is she screaming in the picture, Woodward? I'll tell you why she's screaming. She's screaming because somebody's trying to do something to her loving husband. Some stupid ex-con with an idiotic idea about selling a camera to the highest bidder. And who doesn't care what he has to do to get it? But we'll see about that. Put the knife away. If she's screaming in the picture, it's on account of what some guy must be doing to her loving brother. You better put that knife away, Chester. You put her away. I'll take it and peel your skin off. <laughs> Try to take my camera. Try to cut me, will ya? Stay away from the window! Watch out! <laughs> oh, Chester. Chester, my poor darling husband. And Woodward. Woodward, my brother, my flesh, my very own flesh. I'll die. I will simply die. There's nothing left for me now. Except this suitcase full of money. How thoughtful of you, Chester. Well, don't worry about me. I'll muddle through somehow. We have to learn to live with tragedy. Poor Chester, and poor Woodward. My heart is simply, simply too full to say any more. May you both rest in peace. Now, where is that camera? Here. One picture left, huh? One more picture to remember you boys. For posterity. Pardonnez-moi. Oh! How did you get in here? I have, uh, how you say, the key. There is something in the way of laundry that I should take, no? You got the wrong room, Jack. There's no laundry up here. I'm checking out. There is the matter of dirty laundry. And your two friends, they have checked out already. Ah, yes, I see them. Such a pity. Lying down there in the courtyard. So young. One moment full of life, vim, vigor, and the next moment, poof. What do you think you're doing with that suitcase? Doing? But, madame, I told you I'm here for the laundry. I'm, how do you say, cleaning you out. You're cleaning me out? And while you're doing that, Jack, what do you think I'll be doing? Well, I'll kill you, buddy. I'm going to be calling the cops. Uh, cops? You mean the gendarmes? <laughs> you will forgive me, but if you call the police, Madame will get herself into, how do you say, one fantastic bind. Dear lady, I know all about you. I did some checking. You, your husband, your brother, you're wanted. So the money is up for grabs. Why, you little rat! And as for the police... I advise you to get out while you can. When they see what's in the courtyard down below, they shall be up here sans invitation. Translation, uninvited, if you catch my meaning. So you walk out of here with the loot, and I get nothing but a big fat goose egg? At your service. Now, as to the laundry, it may be back on Thursday, or maybe Friday, or maybe never. And the camera. But I am not a hog. I leave the picture with you. Sacre no, this is a picture of the courtyard below. Well, sure it is. I just took it. And if you don't mind, I think I'll just keep it. As a souvenir. But how can this be? In the picture, there are more than two bodies. More than two? Then who else is down there? 
Watch your step, madame, the broken glass, you will trip and hurt yourself! <sighs> yes, there are more than two bodies, just as the picture shows. Uh, one, two, three, four? That is impossible! Wait, let me see. Oh, the camera! There it is. I can see it from here. If I lean out a few. Well, it, uh, ah! Object known as a camera. Vintage uncertain. Origin unknown. But for the greedy, the avaricious, the fleet of foot, who can run a four-minute mile so long as they're chasing a fast buck, it appears to be an ally. But appearances are deceiving. It isn't at all what it seems. It's really nothing more than a beckoning come-on for a quick walk around the block in the Twilight Zone. We'll continue with the Twilight Zone after these messages. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. A most unusual camera starring Mike Starr with Stacey Keach as your narrator was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Alyssa Fraden, Rich Komenik, Brooke Reed, Christian Stolte, Turk Muller, Roger Wolski, Carl Amari, and Doug James. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.